Here we go back again. Sorry, we had a signal interruption. Okay, we're going back to where we were going. And let's see where we're at. All these technical difficulties are making my day a challenge today. We're going to do the same on this flame. I think that's what they call this design is a flame. Oh yeah, I'm here, Cherry. We, we have, um, again, we have storms coming in tonight and that can make our signal just completely disappear. Okay, let's come in and do this side. Brush has suddenly decided to go wide on the tip on me. I hate when that happens. I have so many little brushes and every once in a while you get one that just, you're painting with it, it's going fine, and then it blows wide and does not hold the paint correctly. There we go. This is why I have a million brushes. And if this looks a little uneven tomorrow, once it's dry, I'll come back in, put a little more of the scarlet over it. Because again, the scarlet is translucent. And that can happen. It doesn't worry me. It just means that that's part of the job is figuring that out. This is going to be really pretty when they're done. I like how this is playing. I'm really enjoying this. And this is my fun project while other bigger projects are drying. I get to do stuff like this. So it's like, ooh, look, I get to play. All right, so let's go take some of the royal gold. And I think we're going to put the royal gold right in here in between these stitchings. My goal is to make these boots worthy of the Grand Old Opry. By the way, no, I'm not a country western music fan, but sometimes all the killer sparkle and stuff, it just lights me up. Uh, what brush am I using for the details? This is... 
an Ultrek Sabalette, and this is, if I can see the size on it, I don't think it even has, oh, it's a, it says it's a number one, but you know, I just go and look for soft bristle brushes in the size I need when I'm doing stuff like this. I have white nylon brushes, they're stiffer. I have sable and sable-like brushes. I have squirrel hair. I really, I go, I'm, I'm one of these brush junkie people, so I walk into an art store and go, look, that's something I know I could use. And I buy without specific need in mind because I always, always need brushes. And if you think I'm kidding about the brush junkie thing, here. This is just part of my brush collection. Just a little bit of it. You open up so you can see what I'm talking about since it's sitting like a... This is just some of them. Behind me, I have another bin of big brushes. I have another small tea container of brushes. I have been collecting brushes for a long, long time. And when I can afford really good ones, I use really good ones. When I need to do something inexpensively, I have resources for cheap brushes. But let me be honest with you. If you take care of your brushes, they will last you a lifetime. Um, I accidentally let things dry in my brushes. I've ruined some very expensive brushes that way. My best tip, even if I've let something like shellac dry in them, soak it in crud cutter and then clean it with master's brush cleaner. Um, I know Artistic Painting Studio sells master's brush cleaner, but um, I can also get it in other places. And uh, I like the big tub one, the one that looks like a giant margarine tub because I go through a lot of it. If you don't need it, get the smaller size. You don't need everything in the biggest size available. But look how cool that's already starting to look. I am really, really happy with where that's going. That's already starting to look cool. And I think we're probably dry enough. Yeah, I can put a little bit of gold up around there. Let's see if I can get a little gold in here. There we go. will say, oh, look, you've got steady hands. Actually, I don't have them. They're not that steady. But what it is is I've learned tricks. One of them is to try to pull a smooth single brush stroke instead of little tiny um, stabby brush strokes. Like, I don't do this. I don't paint like that. I try to pull one long brush stroke because I'll get a better result that way. Um, and I can always go back in and fill in if I need to. And some of it's simply practice. Y'all know I've been doing this a long time. So oh, it's not it's not like this is my first time with a paintbrush. And I'll still make mistakes. You've you've seen some of my my bonehead moves. But the point is I don't I don't strive for perfect. I strive for what makes me happy. I personally think the word perfect is overrated and it puts too much pressure on us. See there, I goofed. I can clean it off with a little alcohol later. 
I think word perfect is a word that tends to instill fear instead of confidence. So when I use the word perfect, I mean something is perfect for me and it makes me happy. I really, I'm, I'm really enjoying the way this is coming out. And I'll work some more around the flame stitch. Maybe I'll put some foil in there. Maybe I won't. Who knows what I'm going to do. But I'm going to put some more gold around this flame. And then I'm going to work some of the uh, scarlet around the feet and some gold around the feet. We're just going to have a good time with it. questions here. Thank you ladies for the sprinkles. Oh, you sent me a PM Desiree. Great. I'll check it when I'm not on live because I can't check it now. Um, we've already had two interruptions, one from a customer, one from um, signal breaking, so I don't want to do that a third time. I am really, really, really liking the way this is coming out. So we, you can see we're getting fancy, fancy, fancy here. So let's come back up here. We're going to touch up that little spot that I didn't get right here. And then <clears throat> get back in here where I can see the back of the boot a little bit. I know you all can't see that, but I can. Right, I think I may take a little of the twinkle and do that in here around some spots. Try to put this up so you can see it and I can still paint it. It may not be easy. Boots are an odd shape, so it's it's not always sunshine and roses trying to figure this stuff out. I think what I'll do is do a little bit of the pink in here. The scarlet pearl. That looks good. Oh, thank you, everybody. Um, oh, Desiree, yes, I did say, uh, tell everybody earlier what we're going to use, but I'll share it again. We're going to seal it with Angelus sealer. This is a sealer design for leather, so that's what I'm going to use. I, I, I think I said this before. My guess is that you could probably use um, a good uh, water-based top coat that's applied very thinly, but I chose to purchase a top coat designed for leather because um, 
quite frankly, I don't want the top coat to crack. And some top coats will dry really, really hard, which is great, but it doesn't dry flexible. So I don't want to have issues like that. All right, and I'll get up here and do those, but let's get a little more of the twinkle in here. And then I'm going to let you all go for the day, and I'm going to come back and work on these and work on some of the stuff that's drying. And maybe go home at a reasonable hour, but there's no guarantee that that's what I'm going to do, because you all know some days I'm here until, oh, halfway to morning. I get into something, I have to get it done. So this looks very white going on, but if you look at the top of the boot here, you can see that it's starting to dry with a beautiful pearly look to it. So I think this will make that toe stand out really nicely. Now, if you, I, I will use some of this on the, on the handbag as well, but I'm going to be careful with it because, again, this dries down tight and hard, and the, the only reason I'm using it is that I'm able to use it on the edge of stitching, and it's not going to be in a place that requires it to be so flexible. And, you know, I know that if it chips, that's on me because I'm taking a chance but I've been so pleased with everything else I've done with Robersons that I'm giving it a shot on that. So it says on here, plaster, wood, paper, and canvas. If it's flexible enough for canvas, it should be flexible enough for detailing on leather. And trust me, there are paints that are not flexible enough for canvases. Oh Lord, I've had plenty of canvases that I've had fall apart because I thought what I was using was going to hold up and it didn't. Now this is different. Again, boots are different because you're bending. Your flex, most flexible part actually in the boot is right here at the ankle, right in this area. So that's where you want to really be careful what you apply for paints and stuff. So if it's not going to be flexible, you're probably going to have a, an iffy result. And that's specifically why I chose to buy some leather paints as well as use our Robersons. Because frankly, I want to be able to compare the two too. To compare the two as well. But I know these are just going to be my, these are going to end up being my favorite boots. Now again, if you don't like doing fiddly stuff like this, which is, quite frankly, my happy place. This is not the kind of technique for you. Go and foil, seal, and be happy. So if you were at wondering, if you're new here, I carry the Artsyville foil adhesive that we use, I carry the foils, and I carry the Robersons liquid metals. All the Angelus products I purchased on Amazon um, because this is, I'm working very detailed on leather and I want to make sure I have leather appropriate products that I'm working with. Now, I know a lot of people have foiled cowboy boots and had terrific results, but I'm also painting them. So I'm making sure I have an abundance of product to test.
I'm sorry if you can't see all of this. Unfortunately, I have to see it too. <laughs> so I try to angle it so you can see what I'm doing, but it is not an easy angle. And as you'll notice, some of my lines are much thinner than others. I am literally following the stitching seam. So if it's wider in some spots, so are my brush strokes. I am filling in the space between the cutout and the stitching. That is not even, even if they're, you know, these, a lot of these are hand stitched. Some of them are machine stitched. Either way, it's a pattern and we're embracing it. These are kind of my Mother's Day present to me. And I think they're pretty snappy, as my grandfather used to say. Okay, so you can see I have done the twinkle paint all on this area of the cutout. I have then put the gold here, so I've got to get a little more pink up into this area and to this area to the side and then we're gonna actually call it an evening instead of waiting for one more thing to cut me off <laughs> yes uh, go definitely go back um we were we're actually in three parts tonight we had uh, a customer come in that i needed to take care of which is exactly what I'm here for. That's part of the business. And then um, we had a power surge or a, a, we lost signal or whatever did it, but we lost signal for a minute. And so we had to come back in three parts. So I apologize for all the extra steps to follow me tonight, but sometimes that's the way the day goes. Now I know you can't exactly see what I'm doing here. That's because I can't put this on its side. This is a small space and it requires me to actually have the boot in a way that I can really see the edge that I'm painting. All right, everybody. So you can see where we're going with these. I think this is pretty cool. I'm really happy with what I'm seeing. Let me put the gold on this side so you get a, a much more completed view of what the boot's gonna look like. I've been flipping over and doing different sides on this and that's nothing new for me. I just go where, I mean, that's not the right brush for that. Let me take this brush. one spot on here kind of completed. That would be that would be nice. Finish one spot completely tonight, Maury. That would be good.
Okay, so if you get look at this side, you can see where we're going with the bottom. We've got pink details. We've got the twinkle. We've got the royal gold. Uh, I haven't figured out what, what I'm doing back there yet. And then if you come back here, you get the idea of where we are with the top. You can see we've got the flames outlined. We've got some outlining done here and up on top. So there's, this is going to be a pretty blingy, wow pair of boots. And this is what I am loving. I'm so happy with this. All right, everyone. Thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for your patience with the power loss and everything all the time. We're going to come back. I'm going to bend down like this so I don't have to reach the camera again. We're going to come back tomorrow. We'll be working on this. We'll be working on furniture. And we are going to be, you know, kind of doing some fun stuff this week. Thank you all so much for being here with me. Thank you for your patience. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>